Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, from my room beside a washing machine here in Dublin, Ireland. Um, I'm afraid I have absolutely no visual um, on our Microsoft Teams at the moment, so I'm just going to go with it, as we all do. Um, but I'm giving everybody a big smile. Um, People say I don't need an introduction, but for those of you who are visually impaired like I am, let me just describe to you a little bit of what I look like. Um, I have blonde hair, I have very pale white skin, I'm wearing a pair of black round glasses like Edna from The Incredibles. I have a very bright green shirt, and this is my zero project shirt that I wear all the time uh, in sort of my nod to the Zero family. I'm just going to take a moment for everybody um, just to have that sense and feeling we are all around the world. And this is the first time in over a decade I have not been in Vienna with the Zero family. And just listening to the Zero song, I was just thinking Zero Barriers and all the barriers that are here for us to connect with each other. And the most potent and powerful thing about Zero is our connection with each other around the world. We have said for many years in the UN that we wished our room was bigger so we could have more people join our big global family. And if maybe there is one part of this global pandemic, we now have three times as many people join us online. And whether, where we may not be able to turn around and give each other a hug, and everybody knows I'm a big hugger, or put a hand on a shoulder or look at each other directly in the eye. I really encourage all of us, um, use these three days maybe to reach out to some of your zero friends. Just even by WhatsApp, a text message, on social media, just to connect because that's what we'd be doing. And for all of you right now, put down those phones just for a second, take your head up off the laptop, and if we just be present with each other, to say hello, even through the energy around the world. I also want to acknowledge the huge, um, the huge pain and hardship our community have faced all around the world. It has been an incredibly hard time, and there is no doubt of that, not at all. And so just to acknowledge those who have lost people, who have struggled and who are struggling, um, this, we need to acknowledge that that has been the case. And yet, here today, on the other side of that, we have an amazing opportunity, all of us, all of us do. The theme of the Zero Conference this year, which I think is the third time, it's employment in ICT, of course, which is a huge passion of mine. Um, as the founder of the Valuable 500, which is this global campaign and community resetting the business system to equally include people with disabilities, this, of course, is my passion area. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that later. But actually, could we be at a better time? This moment in time that is the opportunity, that is the light where the cracks can you know, be proven to be good. Is we have seen in the last year, the business community and the business system has flexed. It has adapted and it has changed because it had the intention and the willingness to do so. Now, we can't unknow that. We know that as a human race and a society. And that is what's exciting about today. How can we leverage all that we have learned in this last year when we have seen the companies thriving in this pandemic are those companies that would have included equally people with disabilities? Many of the tools that we use today are those have been designed or innovated for and with people with disabilities. Now the issue of employing that innovation and talent, we no longer need to make the case for that, right? Isn't this the opportunity to help and support business future-proof themselves? This is not us making the case anymore. This is encouraging our business community really to see the risk if they don't. 
So just before I introduce our keynote speakers, just to say, as I'm here in Dublin and there's snow on the ground, which is very unusual with my two dogs, I do want to say a huge hello to all our friends and our family. I, am, I will be lucky enough to join my fellow uh, Zero Project Ambassador, Michael Ramon, later on at 11 o'clock when we're talking about fulfilling dreams. But I encourage all of you to come in and out of these three days and to really share with each other. I also want to say um, it is odd for me that a year ago I did a keynote speech in the Raffaisian Bank in Austria, and they are one of our valuable 500 companies now as of today, and we have 423. And I just want to thank them so much for being our valuable 500 company from Austria. However, we must get on with the day. And uh, I will not be shouting, I will not be dancing with Wilfred to La Crunch, but I will be keeping time. I have it here on my phone. And I want to introduce you to the head of our Zero family, the wonderful Martin Essel. And I think it's incredibly important for us to remember that Martin's ability to influence this change came from his success as a business leader and a business person. We truly believe that inclusive business can create inclusive societies. And that inclusive business requires inclusive leaders. And inclusive leaders are those leaders who use their head and their heart. Martin Essel has consistently and constantly been committed to using his influence for change, for driving change for a world that everyone means everyone and everyone belongs. Martin, if I was with you, my voice is shaking because I wish I was, I would be giving you a really big hug and I hope you can see me. And so over to you, Martin, to be the father of your Zero Project family and give you a big clap. Hello, thank you so much, uh, Caroline, for your warm welcome, uh, your excellencies, um, Mrs. Uh, Valli, uh, head of the United Nations headquarters in Vienna, uh, and dear partners, dear Zero Project ambassadors, friends and members of the big Zero Project uh, network, let me just audio describe at the very beginning myself. I'm a white male in the 50s with some gray hairs, wearing a dark suit, um, a green tie. And next to me, there is a wooden sculpture showing the seedling sprouting through the opening of a bowl. This represents the symbol and the mission of the Zero Project. First, innovation have the power to change society to be inclusive and second, empowering innovative practices and policies in breaking all barriers that exist for people with disabilities. I too should like to bid you welcome, all about virtually, wherever you are. Given the realities of 2020, I am all the more grateful and humbled that the Zero Project was able to host its conference in February uh, last year at the United Nations headquarters in Vienna. Just before we started to feel the full force of the coronavirus, we welcomed some 800 guests from 90 countries. All of them came to Vienna, stayed with us for three days and traveled home safely. Looking back, all of the happening just a few days before the virus hit the world with its full force and the world went into lockdown two weeks later, this was like a miracle. For me, it felt like a miracle. I will forever be grateful for that and later I decided being a Christian to set a sign for God that he has protected all of us. And I set this sign also for another reason. Times of pandemics have always been times of crisis, but also times of big shifts in societies. And we need to be reminded for these moments where society changed and why that happened. I personally commissioned 
Emmerich Weissenberger and Nora Rusic to build the very first accessible Corona monument in Austria. Five meters high, accessible, with seven seals and demonstrating the ups and downs of human existence. And so because of COVID and all that has happened over the last year, here we are now, maybe a part in body, but together in both, in spirit and virtually. Let us start with the announcement of our latest Zero Project Almanach 2021 today. This edition brings all together all 662 awarded innovative practices and policies back from 2013, including an annex listening short summaries of each awardee. Essentially, we describe the complete story of the Zero Project to date. And we have produced a parallel edition in German language and a third edition in Spanish to be published later on this year, thanks to our wonderful partner, Descubreme. We believe that finally, after so many years of productive work, the narrative should focus even more on the impact of the Zero Project, on the progress, change and opportunities that have been created by our collective efforts and contributions. And speaking of Fondation Descubreme and our wonderful partnership, in November last year, Carola Rubia and her fantastic team in Chile mounted virtually the very first ever Zero Project Conference Latin America in Spanish, and it was a real success, with some 2,000 attendees from around the globe. We look forward to continuing our work together, but also to create further partnerships in the future that support the mission of the Zero Project for a world without barriers. And so, what about this year? At the Zero Project, we have always recognized that crises are opportunities. If you are prepared both to be bold and of course to be innovative. The circumstances we are in currently are no exception. So this year we have sized the chance to reinvent ourselves and the event totally. Uh, building on the work we have been doing to digitalize not only all research, but also our network approach, we have been able to produce a virtual conference in a unique and professional way. What this means is that despite all travel restrictions, we shall actually be able to reach much more people around the world than ever before. Therefore, video has now become an integral part of our communication. Accessible, of course, with audio description, sign language and captioning for many different languages we all speak. Indeed, the whole video content of the conference will be available at the end of February on our Zero Project streaming platform in categories, searchable and with categorized content. Later this year, we will open up the Zero Project database of all innovations for full access to all of you with not only written content, but tens of thousands of presentation, pictures, videos we had collected so far. Had it not been for the virus, I doubt, we should have seen such a rapid adoption of digital tools to communicate and share, to learn and work. But as I always stress, the Zero Project is not about us. It is all about you. It is about the community of both persons with and without disabilities. 
For any of us to continue to benefit from these opportunities, we still need the innovators for change. The innovators, their innovations, and supporting partners. And this is, I believe, where the Zero Project come in. We are all, where we all can help to make a huge difference in the world by helping identifying the innovators, by encouraging them, supporting them and their innovations to grow, and by helping them get their messages, ideas and innovations out of the world. This year, we identified 82 innovative practices and policies on employment and ICT solutions from civil society, the public sector and business sector. And the conference will bring them all to you. You will see videos about them. You will see documentary of solutions that several of them has developed independently from each other, like social businesses or 3D print. You will learn about cutting edge technologies and about the perspective and pitfalls of artificial intelligence. You will hear experts and users and beneficiaries that have down-to-earth discussions what, uh, about what really works and what doesn't. You will have CEOs, EU commissioners, ministers, leading representatives, uh, uh, but uh, also leading figures of civil society. In total, some 500 experts from almost 100 countries. And you can interact with them via the Zero Project conference platform. Another small testament to just what can be done is that we together with our partner Ashoka, Discoverme as well as our mentors and scaling partners have been able to achieve with the Zero Project Impact Transfer Initiative. Now, enjoy yourselves for the coming three days. And while we should love to have you all here with us in person, we all recognize that this is just not possible. But you are with us virtually, in larger numbers than ever before, and with some amongst of you, I'm sure may never have been able to join us uh, in any other circumstances than those in which we are currently find ourselves. To you, I wish a very special welcome in our community. As you will, I hope, discover working together, I truly believe we can and we will create a more inclusive, accessible, just and equitable society. Because it is you who are the change makers and it is you who are the power. Let us seize the opportunities together and make the world a better place for all. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful and inspiring conference. Caroline. I wish that I could give you a big hug, Martin. And you have to promise us a very, very big venue next year for the thousands of us that will descend upon Vienna. So for our next keynote, um, we are delighted to have with us Director General Gada Valley. Gada is the first woman to hold the position of Director General UN Office of Hope and Crime. She is a self-praised inter international gen uh, gender advocate and champion, like myself, and has been passionate about disability inclusion. In her former role of Minister for Social Solidarity in Egypt, she passed legislation to remove barriers to the inclusion of people with disabilities. Now, who better could we have here today with us to be our keynote? And so please, everybody, send a huge energetic welcome to Gada Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Vienna. It's an honor to join you for ZeroCon 21. The UN in Vienna has long served as the proud host of the Zero Project Conference. And I'm delighted that we could be together virtually this year. I'm grateful to Martin Essel, the Zero Project team, 
for inviting me to open this conference. The commitment of the Essel Foundation to a world with zero barriers is impressive and very much needed. By bringing together partners from 184 countries and serving as a global forum for cooperation and a platform for positive change, the Zero Project shares a higher purpose with the UN. In fact, the Zero Project was, by coincidence, one of the first initiatives I heard about when I arrived in Austria to take up my post as Director General of the UN Office at Vienna one year ago. I was pleased to learn that this groundbreaking project is based in Austria, and I look forward to strengthening our cooperation. It is also an honor to have Caroline Casey with us this morning. Ms. Casey's efforts have done so much to place disability inclusion on the global business agenda and to help the private sector understand that inclusion is not only good, but also good for business. I very much believe that social entrepreneurs will lead the way to a more equitable, more inclusive, and more prosperous world. Governments, the UN, the private sector and civil society need to work together to support the innovators and leaders of today and tomorrow. It, it is in this spirit that I welcome you. The distinguished participants and global change makers of the Zero Project Conference, and I salute you for your work, your determination and your dedication. By sharing innovative policies and practices for improving the daily lives of 15% of the world's population and enabling them to enjoy their rights and opportunities, you are taking the concrete steps needed for all our countries to implement the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This convention, which entered into force in May 2008, represents the first comprehensive human rights treaty of the 21st century. 182 parties have ratified the convention, which addresses challenges of accessibility, employment, education, independent living, and political participation. Over the years, the UN has made efforts to mainstream disability inclusion across the pillars of its work, namely international peace and security, human rights, and development. The obligations set forth in the Convention are reflected in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and seven targets of the Sustainable Development Goals explicitly refer to persons with disabilities. Greater social inclusion has thus been recognized as a key priority for the international community. It is also an issue very close to my own heart. Before I joined the UN in Vienna in February 2020, I served as Minister of Social Solidarity in my home country, Egypt. One of my pr proudest achievements as a minister was passing the first comprehensive disabilities law, which expanded the disabilities officially recognized in Egypt from four to 13, and helped many millions of children and adults access the services and support they needed and deserved. In order to achieve this, I collaborated very closely with people with disabilities, with their families and communities. Together, we developed greater understanding and we agreed on workable solutions. I brought this valuable experience to my new role at the UN Secretariat, which as an organization with more than 36,500 employees in 193 countries is taking determined action to lead by example in the area of disability inclusion. In June 2019, our Secretary General launched the UN Disability Inclusion Strategy and last year, the General Assembly invited him to present the first comprehensive report on steps taken by the UN system to implement the strategy. This report showed that our organizations, both in headquarters and the field, are just starting to adopt a more comprehensive and coordinated approach to addressing disability inclusion, and that we still have work to do to realize a more inclusive UN for all. Here in Vienna, I launched the Action Plan on Disability Inclusion for the UN Office at Vienna and the UN Office on Drugs and Crime in December 2020, on the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. The Action Plan will guide our implementation of the UN strategy. It addresses 15 indicators in four core areas, namely leadership, strategic planning, organizational culture, inclusiveness, pro and programming. It will help to ensure that our office can effectively mainstream disability inclusion in our work and in how we work. 
These efforts include new initiatives to encourage and support persons with disability to undertake internships with us. Sharing job openings through the International Disability Alliance mailing list and other channels. And communicating our commitment to accommodating candidates and colleagues with disabilities. Within the organization, we are strengthening knowledge and awareness through learning activities, which we have conducted in collaboration with NGOs. We are also looking at improving accessibility for users of our website and for our visitors. The Zero Project team has already provided us with very useful support by sharing insights and experiences. Thanks to you, our own conference management took steps to make our events more accessible including by stocking up on assistive devices, such as hearing loops, footstools, and lectern risers. The UNODC Secretariat to the governing bodies, which supports my key member state commissions, was so inspired by the access guide used for the Zero Project Conference that the team developed an accessibility guide of its own. Going forward, I hope we can continue relying on your support. The new strategy for the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, which I will launch in the next week, highlights the importance of disability inclusion. These priorities are also reflected in our new strategic vision for Africa and the vision we are developing for Latin America and the Caribbean. This is also very important in view of the fact that some 80% of persons with disability live in developing countries. We need to do more to raise awareness of their needs, as well as generate resources and support to address them. And I want the UN office at Vienna and UNODC to serve as model for disability inclusion for our field offices. Ladies and gentlemen, our efforts and the work of this conference are now more important than ever. The COVID-19 crisis has driven up to 124 million people into extreme poverty last year. For the marginalized and vulnerable, the situation has heightened dangers of abuse and neglect and intensified gender-based violence and other threats. Pandemic-related restrictions have compounded accessibility challenges and limited essential services. As you know very well, even before the crisis, people living with disabilities worldwide were less likely to enjoy access to education, health care and livelihoods, or to participate and be included in their communities. The pandemic threatens to further deepen and entrench inequalities and risks, and we need to take determined steps to stop this from happening. Most of all, we need to ensure that as our societies emerge from the crisis, the aspirations and rights of all persons with, with disabilities are respected and taken into account. Governments, international organizations, the private sector, and all stakeholders need to work with and for persons with disabilities, consulting and including them in decision-making in the COVID-19 response and beyond. It is a challenging moment for all our societies, but it is also an opportunity to reimagine the world we live in to reinvent practices and ways of work, and fast-track global progress on disability inclusion. By connecting innovators and sharing ideas, the Zero Project Conference can play a key role in helping to achieve these objectives and to promote a fair, just, and inclusive recovery. Dear participants, we need your contributions, and I count on you as our close partners as we strive for greater social inclusion. Together, we can achieve a world without barriers, where truly no one is left behind. Thank you, and I very much look forward to being able to welcome you in person at the Vienna International Center for the next Zero Project Conference in 2022. Thank you. Caroline. Thank you, uh, Ms. Valley. It is wonderful to Thank hear um, particularly your statement about the disability strategy, mainstreaming your work and how you work. And I think that that idea of fully integrating and infusing disability inclusion into everything we do, that intersectionality is where we can see full inclusion. So thank you so much for your leadership and your commitment. Now, if we were in, uh, in the UN, in Vienna, together, we would have Ambassador Selner with us. She is the permanent representative of the Permanent Commission for Austria in the UN. And she has sent us through a video message. So 
please can we roll the video and just for a moment imagine that we are all together in the UN building in Vienna. Dear participants of the 2021 Zero Project Conference, dear Mr. Martin Essel, it is a great pleasure for me to address you in this opening session of the 2021 Zero Project Conference. I participated in the last conferences and was very impressed by the scope of this private initiative, the high interest it raises and the quantity and quality of projects and activities presented. Every year, the conference has created high added value as it has always provided a fantastic platform for all participants to think creatively about better ways forward. 2021 marks the 15th anniversary of the adoption of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Even though the ongoing implementation of this milestone Human Rights Convention has shown visible results, there is still so much room for improvement. We yet have to create a world where we can exclude that disabilities may lead to discrimination. As the representative of Austria, I'm proud to inform you that my country has the ambition to become a role model for inclusiveness regarding employment, education, sports, and more on all levels of administration. The convention has become part of our national law in 2008 and we are working on the implementation of the National Plan of Action. These activities have been evaluated recently and the result is published on the homepage of the competent Austrian Federal Ministry for Social Affairs, Health, Care and Consumer Protection. This evaluation contains recommendations for the next plan of action, for example, on digitalization. Austria also actively advocates for such policies in the United Nations and other international fora. Civil society initiatives like the Zero Project and the organizations that you all represent are key in achieving this target. The Zero Project report, which outlines an impressive 80 innovative practices and policies on the topic of inclusive employment, I am sure will give additional impetus for further discussion on improvements. I thank Mr. Martin Essel and his foundation for providing this forum to discuss and share innovative approaches to how we can support persons with disabilities to enjoy their human rights. I also thank all of you who participate in this conference for your tireless commitment and dedication to this important cause. I personally regret that due to COVID-19, we are not able to meet in person, which makes it more difficult to talk to each other and exchange views. The online format of this conference, however, also provides the opportunity to reach more people and interested parties than ever before. The coronavirus changes the way we collaborate and together we will have to make sure that this change will not leave disabled persons behind. There is no real alternative. Zero barriers must be the ultimate goal. I'm excited to hear more on zero project findings and ongoing projects during the upcoming sessions. And I wish all of us a successful and forward looking conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your um, words of uh, welcoming our participants, Ambassador Selna. We are um, really looking forward to having you live in person uh, next year with us. And uh, right now we're going to complete our um, first discussion uh, panel. We already um, heard the uh, first uh, two participants uh, giving uh, their uh, keynotes and introduction uh, speech. And um, I would like to present to you um, one of our um, next uh, speakers. Uh, she's a blind alum student from Austria and shows that it is very much possible to use your talents and be able to have an academic career with a disability and I would like to hand over to Sila Karabulut for her introduction speech. <coughs> Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sila Karabulut and I'm from Turkey but I live in Austria. I'm currently studying law at the University of Vienna. I was born blind and attended the Institute 
for blind children during my primary and secondary school time. Since high school, I visited a normal school with only sighted classmates. At the moment, I'm in the third year of my law studies. I'm doing well because there is a support organization in Austria, which is called Literatur Service für Blinde und Sehbehinderte. From my lectures, I get all the books and the information sheets in word translated from the literature service. They also change the text that it is easier to read for blind persons. For example, it is very hard for me to deal with diagrams, enumerations and intendations. All my seminars, working exercises and, and lectures I record with a special recording device called Milestone. At home, I write it down on my special computer with a braille display. Now I want to talk about, my, about how I experienced the labor market and about, my and about how I experienced the accessibilities of the university. I would also talk about my plans in the future. As you know, legal studies is mainly based on reading texts. Sometimes the documents are not prepared for blind persons. There are now many auxiliary devices and software for text recognition on the market, like screen readers, rail displays, um, milestones, audio descriptions, uh, speech recognitions, text to, sc text to speech, and automated reading devices. These products make it easier for blind and low vision persons to study and work independently. I personally use a laptop for my studies. On my laptop is a special software called JAWS installed. This software connects my laptop to my braille display via Bluetooth. JAWS also includes a screen reader, a text-to-speech, speech recognition, and other useful aids for blind and low vision persons. On the Braille display, I can read the texts that are shown on the screen line by line. And I also use the milestone for my studies. In spite of all these technologies that support the blind and low vision persons, there are of course some, a lot of problems that we have to face. The majority of these products and technologies are very expensive and most of the countries want to make, want to save on expenses. As a result, they do not cover the costs of many products. That, this is one of the reasons why many blind persons often use outdated devices and software. As a result, they face problems in their workspace because in offices and other working places only new products and new technologies are used. So there is a real need for new technology to be able to work independently. The other problem is in many countries that people with low vision receive little support or training in technology. So they have little knowledge about technology. 
These two problems connected make it particularly difficult for, blind, for many blind and low vision persons to keep up with sighted people in the job market or at the uh, university. For this reason, we would need targeted support for young, uh, for young blind and low vision people in the field of technology and greater financial support from all the countries for devices and software that are at the cutting edge of technology. The other big part of getting access to university or further studies after finishing the high school contains the big part of mobility training. In mobility training, <coughs> blind children learn, to learn how to orientate themselves. There, the use of the white cane is taught and also important ways such as the way from the house to university or from the working place to university are taught. My mobility trainer showed me several times the way, the whole way uh, from my house to the university and back. When I could, she let me go alone, but she always walked behind me during the lessons. Since the ways are long and there are many obstacles, it often takes a long time before a blind person can go to the work or to the university without help. In countries like in Austria, mobility training is free for kids during school time, but it costs a lot of money if you need it for visiting university buildings or your working place. As young people have no possibilities to afford these costs, they often miss chances in universities or on the labor market. It is also a very big obstacle for the individual independence. I got my own mobility trainer during school time. Therefore, I have no problems reaching my seminars. It would be a huge progress if programs were developed for, uh, for low vision persons to train their mobility as well as their technology knowledge. The big goal has to be that uh, young blind people get the same access to the labor market and the university as everyone else. Now I want to talk about my plans in the future. My plans in the future are first to specialize in corporate law and to work in a big international law firm. The second thing is that I want to work as a lecturer at the University of Vienna teaching corporate law. At the moment, most of the universities are not very open-minded for blind lecturers. I hope that we, the blind and low vision persons, can change this situation. But of course, we need help, help to change it. That, book, that would be my biggest wish to this community here at the Zero Project Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, I want to end my speech and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Sila, so much. Um, I have to tell you, we have a few valuable 500 companies from the field of law. So when you qualify, make sure you be in touch. 
um, and the very best of luck with your studies. Um, we are running out of time and I know we would love to have a series of questions. What the Zero Project and the Zero Conference team have assured us, we are collecting all of your questions and we will ensure that will be a full response after the conference for any question that any of you would pose. But because we're on a tight schedule, we have to continue to move through. And before I hand over to Andreas and Sima, I just want to say just for a second, if we look on the stage, you will see the younger generation in Sila. With um, Ms. Valley, you will see institution and the power of policy making. And with Martin Essel, the power of business. This is a decade of collaboration. And with this multi-stakeholder approach, we can change this. And to Ambassador Selna's point, there are no more excuses anymore. We have to build back fully inclusive of everyone. So I pass on to our co-hosts. I will see all of you throughout the next three days. And a huge thank you to Ma Michael Fenbeck, the great Zero Project Conference team, and have a wonderful three days. Thank you, uh, Caroline. Uh, thank you to everyone who contributed to our first uh, session.